Welcome, my dear students of class 7. This is another class with me, your tutor, Atsinyo Sekose, and this tutoring is coming from the Directorate of School Education, Nagaland. So today we have a very interesting topic, and our topic is called The Ashes That Made Trees Bloom. The Ashes That Made Trees Bloom, you will find it on chapter 4, page 54. Page 54. And this lesson is written by William Eliot Griffiths. Written by William Eliot Griffiths. Now, today's um, lesson is a little lengthy, so I would like to go a little fast so that we will be able to cover more. So here we have some new words here, and I'll be um, reading it out according to the paragraph. So if you can take a look into your text, and in the first paragraph, you can uh, note it down quickly. In the first paragraph, we have here a new word that is dame, which means lady. Then two, blue crepe. It is referring to a cushion that is made of blue color. Then the third one, tidbits. Tidbits here means referring to pieces, bits and pieces, all right? Then we have ho, H-O-E, in second paragraph. A ho, I'm sure you are familiar with it. It is a tool we use for digging. We usually use it in the field and so on. Then the next word in the second paragraph, sod. SOD, which means referring to that surface of um, the grass that is covering the earth's surface, that part is called sod. Then, paragraph three, few yards, which means a few meters away, all right? Seven, gleamed, which means shining in a very brilliant manner. Then, fourth paragraph, smothered. Smothered here means we can say great love or showing great kindness, but uh, in a, to the extent that the person is feeling suffocated, okay? Then, number five, paragraph five, point number nine, coxed, which means uh, being persuaded or tricked. So in our lesson here, it is more to do with being tricked. Then, number eight, paragraph eight, point number ten, we have flung, which means through, through, throwing something away. Then, 11, heaped, that is covering or covered. Paragraph 9, 12, mourning, which is, um, it sounds similar with mourning, but it is different. It means deep grief or deep sadness. You know, when we lost uh, our dear ones or things that we like, we go for deep grieving. So that is what we mean here. Then 13, incense, which means scented, all right? Scented sticks that we burned, that is incense. Then paragraph 10, 14, uh, point number 14, mill. Now, mill here is referring to a tool that we use for mixing or blending things, all right? Now, if you can look at the picture here, and in fact, even in your textbook, you have a picture there. So we have a mortar, and a mortar is usually made of or wood, it is a wooden ball, all right, and we have a pestle. In our text, it's referred to as hammer, but hammer and pestle, it means the same thing here, okay? So that's what we have here, and the mill is slightly different from this one, which is more, let's say that it is, it has to, it has a wheel, spinning wheel, all right, and if you turn it, it can blend things. So that is mill. And in your paragraph four, uh, 12, Point number 15, you have the word envious. I'm sure you are familiar with it, but uh, for a reminder, it means envious means jealous, all right? Then 16, ashes. We already know what is an ash, but again, a reminder, which is powdery gray substance. When we burn things, it turns into gray powdery substance. So that is ashes. Then paragraph 14, point number 17 here is fall bad smell or stinky smell, all right? So that's what we have here. And now we will be taking a look into our lesson. So you will find that there is a change here in our lesson here. When stories or things are written in paragraph, all right, we call it as prose. Unlike the previous classes, we have also dealt with poetry and we learned that it is stanza in prose. It is called paragraph. So I will be giving you explanations according to paragraph. Um, I will not be able to read out as such, so we would go according to paragraph. So here, our story, you will find that 
that it is titled the ashes that made trees bloom so we are going to find out what that means here it began in the first paragraph with two description of two old people who lived during the Demios days. Now we have some new words in your textbook, those I have not mentioned it on the board, so you can also refer to it. So Demios is in the 19th century Japan and uh, at, at that time people uh, have very wealthy landowners. Now remember our story is a Japanese tale, so we are going to deal with characters of Japanese character and the story is borrowed from Japanese folk tale so that's what we are going to find out today so uh, during the time of Demios that is in the 19th century in Japan there lived two old couple and who do not have any children but they have a pet dog and its name is called Muko and now because they do not have any children they love this pet dog like anything so they would treat it so much with kindness and treat it as though it's their own child and you will find that uh, they treated it with, uh, gave it, the lady or the old woman made a cushion, a blue crepe cushion, so that the, the dog would sleep on it soundly and comfortably. And then they would also feed it with bits of fishes, all right? And then you will also find that they have even fed, they even fed the dog with their own chopsticks and fed it with rice. So that is the way they were treating it like a baby, like their own child. So when the dog gets treated in that way, the dog also loves back its owner or protector in our text as it says, and love them back as though it has a soul, like a human. So that was what we see here. In the second paragraph, we learned that the old man is a very hard-working person. Remember, he would go to the field early in the morning and then until sunset, that is O Tento Sama in Japanese, and only when the sun set, he would come back home. So we learned that he, he is a very hard-working person. And you know, we also learned in this paragraph, second paragraph, that uh, he, lo he will not harm any soul that is any soul that has life so we find that he is very kind even towards animals and the dog would usually accompany him to the field and as they come home we will find that he even for little birds like heron heron here is referring to a species of bird and for the in order to feed the bird he will turn up the sword and let it feed on the worms. So see, that is the extent of kindness that he has with all things around him. Now in the third paragraph, we learned that one fine day, the dog came running to its owner and trying to motion it towards a place. And when uh, the old man went to the, that place, the dog started digging, scratching. So he took out his and start digging that place thinking that it must be a buried dead fish and uh, or a bone fish bone that he might find for the dog but in place of it he found heaps of or piles of gold coins so see the dog has uh, led him to a treasure and in an hour he became a very rich person so we learned that he was rewarded in that way now what happened when he he became uh, when he become very rich when he become very rich instead of keeping all the gold to himself he bought a piece of land and then in order to celebrate called everyone in the neighborhood made a grand feast a big meal and they celebrated in that way so and in fact he also gave a lot of things to his neighbors so that is how we know that he is a very kind person and as for the dog he treated it more with kindness smothered it with kindness so that's what we find here now the problem arises in our story here in the fifth paragraph here it says that in that same neighborhood there 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 is another wicked couple all right old and wicked couple which means ill people bad people and they are not sensitive and kind unlike the previous couple that we discussed and what they do they do usually when the dogs uh, come or passes nearby their house they would kick and scold them so they are very ill and wicked people but when they learned about the story their neighbor's story they coaxed in other words they tricked the dog into their place and try to feed it with bits of fishes and other dainties, which means other tasty food. 
but remember they treat even animals very badly so the dog w did not move at all or try to eat the food that was offered so when that happened they dragged the dog out into the garden and uh, when they did that the dog went straight to a pine tree that was in their garden and he started scratching so now these wicked two wicked people they thought that the dog has led them to a treasure and the man said quick wife hand me the spade and hoe cried the greedy old fool as he danced with joy so that's why we can say that they are covetous old fool which means greedy old fool and they started digging in that place but in place of a heap of gold coins like the previous uh, neighbors what did they find here they found that a dead kitten was buried there and the smell of it was so bad that they dropped their holes and spade and covered their nose and they became very furious which means very angry at the dog thinking that the dog has tricked them so the old man kicked the dog nearly to death and the old woman almost in fact finished the job by hitting the dog with it the sharp spade so the dog head was nearly chopped off and that's how the dog met a terrible death that's how he was ill-treated by these wicked people now in the ninth paragraph we learned that the owner of the dog heard of the death of his pet and he felt very sad he he mourned remember mourning he felt very sad and he grieved for that dear dog why because he treated remember he treated that dog like his own child and so he went over at night to that pine tree and he made a fence with bamboos and made it turned it into a tomb that is a grave in which remember you can mark these things down in which he put fresh flowers then he laid a cup of water and a tray of food on the grave and burned several costly sticks of incense. See, that's how he was mourning for the death of the dog, treating it as though it's a real uh, a person, as though it's their own child. He mourned a great while over his pet, calling him many dear names. That's what we do when we lost our beloved people or uh, person, and we call them by their dear names, see? So that's how he mourned. He was uh, feeling very sad as if he were alive so he treated it even though after the dog had passed away he treated it as though it was still alive remember offering a cup of water and food to on that grave so at uh, that night in the next paragraph in the 10th paragraph we learned that the ni that night the spirit of the dog appeared to him in a dream and said you may want to mark this down it is within inverted commas we would come back to that later the dog in the spirit form told its owner in his dream that cut down the pine trees over my grave and make from it a mortar for your rice pastry and a mill for your bean sauce. So that's what the dog told the owner in his dream to cut down that pine tree where he was under where he was buried and to make a mortar out of it we already know what is a mortar here so the dog told uh, him to make something like this and so that he can use it to pound his rice or made pastry out of it now in the next paragraph the old man what did he do he went over there the next day and chopped down that tree and cut the middle of the trunk a section about two feet long and with great labor which means with really hard work he started to uh, make that mortar so sometimes he used fire to do that sometimes he used a chisel a chisel is a tool all right and i'm sure many of you are familiar with that maybe you have also used it when you are doing carpentry work you know a chisel is a tool with a small blade of iron blade and uh, attached to a handle and you use it to carve wood out of it okay so maybe when you are uh, making a wooden spoon maybe you have also used that so with that tool he started scraping out and made a hollow place remember when we have i'm sure you are familiar with what a mortar is so it has a hollow place where you can pound things right so he made that and made it into a small ball 
he then made a long handled hammer. Remember, hammer here is referring to that bissel that we have in our text, a picture there too. So he made a hammer to pound rice or uh, whatever he need, such as is used for pounding rice. Now, New Year, when New Year's time drew near, he wished to make some rice pastry. So in order to celebrate New Year's time, he is trying to uh, make that. And then when the rice was all boiled, Granny put it into the mortar. Granny here is referring to the kind old woman. And the man lifted the hammer and started pounding uh, the rice. So when they did that, what happened? Everything turned into gold again. And when the old woman turned the mill, put beans there and turned the mill, that also turned into gold. So that's what we find. They were again rewarded with, because of their kindness. And that's how we can see that they were also given or made a magical mortar and a mill. So when the, that was happening, in the next paragraph, we learned that meanwhile, the envious neighbor, the jealous neighbor, they were peeping. They were uh, peeping and they found that they were turning boiled beans into gold. So what did they say here? Goody me, cried the old hag. The, that old woman, that wicked woman, as she saw each dripping of sauce turning into yellow gold. So see, they are very greedy and very selfish. They are spying on their neighbor and they wanted that magical mortar and the mill. So what happened in the next paragraph? So the old couple were rich again. The next day, the stingy people who are very miserly, people who do not want to part with their things, the, those two wicked neighbor came and borrowed the mortar and magic mill. What did they do with it? They filled one boiled rice and the other with beans. Then the old man began to pound and the woman to grind. In other words, turning the mill. But what happened? Instead of gold coins, what did they find here? But at the first blow and turn, the pastry and sauce turned into a foul mass of worms. See, again, in, instead of having gold, it turned into a bad smell of worms. Still more angry at this, they became very furious. And what did they do to the magical mortar and the mill? They chopped, which means they cut the mill into pieces to use as firewood. So that's how uh, it, that's what happened to that magical mortar and the mill. So that's what we have here in our story. That is the first part of our story. Remember, we haven't come across how um, ashes turned trees into blossom, which means blooming. We would come to that in the other parts, that is maybe in the next class. For now, we are going to take a look at our questions comprehension section here. Why did the neighbors kill the dog? I'm sure now you know the answer because they want the gold all to themselves. They thought that the dog would lead them to, uh, to a treasure. So that's why. And then what happened? Instead of leading them to a treasure, they found rotten things. So they got very angry and that's why they killed the dog. They are very selfish people. Now, the next question, we have um, objective questions here. In fact, choose the correct options here. So I will leave that to you. I'm sure you will be able to do that. But remember, read the story very carefully and uh, try to work out your exercises. And when you write your question, uh, in fact, when you write your answers, remember we have learned about reported speech. So write it in the reported speech, which means use past tense. That is, the neighbors killed the dog because killed ED, all right? So you need to put it in that way. And remember, I have pointed out in the previous part uh, on page 57, quick wife, hand me the spade and hoe. That is within inverted commas. That is also something that we learned the other day. So that is in the direct speech. When we are giving the exact word of someone that is found in the direct speech. So that is what we mean by reported speech and directed speech. When you report it, you turn it into past tense. And so when you are writing your answers, you need to change it into past tense. So that's what we have here. And I'm sure now you are able to understand that our story is a very old story, but it has a very uh, interesting central main idea. 
I'm sure you are able to find out that the word in your mouth maybe right now is kindness. Yes, it is about kindness, it is about honesty, and it is about hard work, all right? Remember, the first two couples, they, were very, they are very kind-hearted people. They would not harm a soul. They are very hardworking. So those are some of the main things that we have to remember, and uh, we would continue in the next class. On that note, we would be winding up today's class. Thank you all very much for joining me.